Hello, and welcome to Women in Business, where we interview entrepreneurs and senior managers and show you the strengths, successes, obstacles, and roadblocks women experience in business. Since I believe every person in business needs to be visible, I'd like to invite you to watch www.sob6, that's the number six, tips.com, which will give you some valuable information should you get the call to be on radio or TV, which I think is extremely important. If you'd like to contact me personally, drop me a line at Gail Carson, that's G-A-Y-L-E, Gail Carson 13 at gmail.com, or go to my website, www.spunkyoldbroad.com, and sign up for my weekly newsletter. My guest today is Jeannie Lyons, and Jeannie is a, a friend of mine and uh, does a great job at coaching successful professional women to leave the burnout, frustration, and groundhog day reality behind and find their career with meaning and purpose. She's a best-selling author, an international speaker, and a certified coach. Since founding Accelerated Synergies in 2004, she's helped women overcome limiting beliefs, discover transferable skills, lead with their strengths, and make career change decisions with clarity, confidence, and courage. She is the creator of the online programs Burnout to Bliss and the ABCs of Confident Career Change. Welcome, Jean. Thank you. How are you today, Gail? Oh, I'm doing fine, believe it or not. I mean, you know how things are, and we all have to deal with what's going on in the world today. So uh, since I am doing what I love and you're doing what you love, I'm going to ask you the question, what's the difference between passion and purpose, and why don't you tell people to follow their passion? Oh, that's such a great question, Gail, because... So often I see uh, via social media or just overhearing conversations when people are saying, oh, my gosh, you know, I hate the work situation I'm in now. And often they'll respond with, well, what is your passion? And what I ask them to do is to find their purpose. So let me give you an example of this. My passion is the performing arts. I love particularly ballet and opera, and I've been on the boards to uh, both of those organizations. That's my passion. Now, am I ever going to be a ballet dancer or an opera singer? No, I'm not. You just sometimes have to face the facts and that's not going to happen for me. My purpose is to support the arts. And that's the difference. Just because you love something doesn't mean that that's your purpose. Now, I luckily, and I think you too, have both passion and purpose in my chosen career as a career change coach. So so that's the difference. So, I mean, you can still, though, have a passion that you're good at, you know, uh, but you also do a lot of helping with career changes. And, uh, you know, I'm known for always reinventing myself. So what's the biggest obstacle to overcome when making a career change? Oh, I think that you can identify with this one, Gail, because I know that you have great respect for mindset and doing mindset shifts. And, and that's what I find with people. If they can't overcome their mindset, they're not going to make a good decision. So let me give you an example. If you're coming from a place of desperation, uh, you know, I'm desperate, I have to find a job, I'll take just anything. Well, you know what? Sometimes that's what we have to do and that's okay. But when you need to really find something with meaning and purpose, then what you do is you can't come from a feeling of desperation. 
when you're making a big decision. You know, whether it's to buy that new car and those salespeople know that, that uh, they want to prey on the excitement that you have with getting the new car and you don't make a good de decision with that. The same with choosing a career. If you're desperate, you're not going to make a good decision. So what I help my clients with initially is to get rid of all the baggage that they've had and that they've brought forward so that they can make a good decision because they're coming from a place of peace and calm. Well, you know, I think um, uh, it's true that, that people, mindset is so important, but values are important too. So what you value, I mean, I people always tease me because I always say, well, I, I don't care much about money, but I mean, I know you need money to, to live on and to exist, but still, um, where do the VAT values come into uh, career changes and uh, uh, what you do with your clients? Well, one of the things I have them do early on is to elicit their values. And I have them take a look at what are the top five things in each of the uh, core value descriptions. So, for instance, if money is high up on your values and your family is also high, that could come into conflict. So are you going to take that job because of the money, even though you'll be traveling a lot and will essentially be neglecting your family and, and putting them second to the money. And quite honestly, that happened to me. I had a very good job and it was very well paid. However, I was working, oh my gosh, sometimes 20 hours a day because I was a worldwide director. So I, you know, with all the different time zones in the world, I was almost never off the clock. And I would find out that I needed to travel at nine in the morning. I had to travel to Chicago to do a presentation. And it was my daughter's first dance. Mm. So, you know, th that conflicts. So you need to really be careful about how your relationships and family values lead into that career path that you that you want to have. Yeah, it's it's uh, tough. And I think maybe it's it's um, easier nowadays with all the technology and so forth. But yeah, I, I remember that. I remember when I was going on the speaking circuit and I would leave my house on a Sunday or Monday and come back on a Friday. But before I did that, I, I talked to my family and I said, you know, this is what it's going to be and this is what it's going to be like and what do you think? And of course, what they said to me was, Mom, you're never home anyway, so it's okay. But, um, you know, I, I kind of know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Uh, what's the difference between changing jobs and starting a business? Uh, I, I know I've never worked for anybody, so I've always had my own business and I've always, you know, uh, known the pitfalls of everything. But what do you find is the biggest difference? Well, I think that, you know, if you look at career, career, uh, that word is all, encompass, uh, all encompassing and it can include jobs and it can include having a business. So. I propose that there isn't a lot of difference between changing jobs and starting a business. When you're looking at the steps it takes to get there, and for instance, finding your values. Now, when you're looking at values, you don't just look at your own values. You need to look at the values of the company that you may be working for, or if you're in business, not for yourself, but maybe in a, a direct sales business or a multi-level marketing business, you need to look at the values that those people have too, because they're going to affect your life. 
So, you know, starting a business, you need to look at the, the finances. Do you need funding? Do you need a joint venture partner? Uh, and that is different than, of course, when you when you find a job. And you also have to take into consideration everything that you took for granted in working for someone else, like having vacation pay and benefits and health insurance. So you're not going to have those anymore, right, Gail? Yeah, that's the thing. I think people, especially high-level people, if they leave, live a, uh, leave a corporate job that pays a lot, uh, and then they're in business for themselves. They don't realize what it is to not have a secretary and just have to sweep your own floors and take out your own trash and not have anybody doing things for you and not having any paid benefits or vacations. Those are things, you know, that people who are in corporate America kind of get used to. So I agree with you. It's a big difference. But you also talk about the biggest mistake that people make during a job interview. And I'm curious about what that is. Well, that mistake is not doing the research of the company. And when you go in to do your interview, you really need to make sure you know what this company does. And you need to be prepared to be able to answer the question, why did you choose us? What specifically do you like about our company? Because so many people, especially right now in this climate, are just so happy to get an interview that they're not doing the research and they don't really know what the company stands for, what their mission is. And that's another thing between uh, having a job and starting a business is you both need to have a mission. And even if you're going to work for someone else, you need to know what your personal mission is. And what you want to do with uh, a corporate job because that's what gives you meaning and purpose. Well, that's true. And I, 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 I can't believe people don't do the research, but <clears throat> I guess that's really true, you know, because, um, you know, when you go to work for somebody, you want to make sure that you can stand behind what, what they stand for and also whatever product or service that they're they're offering. So uh, people certainly should do their homework. But you also talk about blunders on resumes. <laughs> so uh, since I've never really had to, uh, you know, I've never really had to, I guess, submit a resume, although I have one, uh, what would that be? Well, you know, things are so different now. And that's that's what I realized. Uh, you know, when I first started this business uh, in 2004 and I wanted to get out there, uh, it was a matter of going to coffee shops and putting up flyers. And and that was I filled every workshop that I wanted to do. Well, now with all the technology, things are so different. Marketing's different everything because it's so social media driven and technology driven. So when you're submitting a resume, you need to be able to know what the correct keywords are that match the job description because the resume goes through what's called an ATS, Applicant Tracking System. And it scans in your resume it sees if any of the keywords match the job description and it'll throw you out before you ever get in front of a set of human eyes. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. That uh, So people send in their resumes and they have no idea what has happened to them. Exactly, because it's not uncommon to send out hundreds and, and I literally mean hundreds of resumes to companies that maybe you've done the research, but you really need to do the research on what the job is and take a look at that job posting and make sure that your keywords match up. 
otherwise the computer is just going to spit you out into, well, I don't know what the equivalent of a computer round file is, but I think you know what I mean. Never, never land, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. So with what everything, you know, that we're going through now with the pandemic and, uh, um, you know, the, the uh, racial issues that we're having and all of this, is it a good time to start a business? I absolutely think so. And I think if you are prepared and you get your ducks in a row, this is a great time to start a business because right now there's so much assistance being offered to new businesses with what's the PPP plan, I think it is, and the Small Business Administration. They're willing to fund people because they know that so many people are on that unemployment role. So they're ready to offer support. And that's why I think it's a really great time to start a business. Wow, you know, um, they say that, uh, uh, I don't know how many uh, businesses fail in the first five years, you know, small business, but it's, it's a challenge. And it's a challenge now because you really have to figure out What's going to be the best way to get your message out? How are you going to meet your customers? How are you going to develop them, et cetera, et cetera? So, uh, you know, I know people are being Zoomed to death. You're one of them. I'm one of them. How do you network during a pandemic other than Zooming? I mean, we still know that the best recommendation for a job is a referral. I mean, nothing is better than having someone say, oh, you must interview this person. She or he is perfect. But uh, yeah, how do you network during a pandemic? Well, it, it's definitely challenging because uh, statistics show that 80% of jobs are gotten through uh, a recommendation from someone. It's They're gotten through networking and not through sending that resume in to the blind computer who's going to accept you or, you know, uh, put you into computer heaven or technology heaven. So you uh, really need to start being on social media. And I know a lot of people, some people who are more mature, this is new for them. And I recommend LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram. And you don't just go in and say, oh, hi, I think I want to work for your company, so would you give me an informational interview? You need to court these people a bit. You need to, well, I'll say flirt with them, but you know what I mean, not overtly flirting with them. You're, you're courting them for getting to know, like, and trust. That know, like, and trust factor is so important right now, and it is challenging. There's also groups called Meetup. And if you join Meetup, you'll see that they do have networking events online now. So it takes some research. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions for anyone in your audience that, that would like to know how to do this. And don't just say, I, w I want to talk to you or I want to work for your company. You really need to develop that no like trust first. And if that doesn't happen, then, uh, you know, there's no incentive for anyone to spend time with you. So you really have to sell yourself. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's not in some ways it's easier because things are online. You can research the company. You can find out about them. You can see their values. You know what their mission statement is. But it's also more difficult because especially now with all these people out of work, your competition is even greater than before. So how, how does someone know if they've reached their potential or not? Well, I knew that I reached my potential when I was excited to get up in the morning. And uh, I do come down and hit my computer first thing. And they say that's probably not the, the best way to start your day. And I'm so excited to see, wow, has somebody sent me an email? Has someone contacted, contacted me? And 
the caveat to this is knowing your true inner self, what your potential is, because, you know, your parents or uh, some other person that you held in high esteem might have said, well, I don't think you've hit your potential. We all have our own potential, and that should be an internal thing. Not being judged by external, what your parents thought you should do, or what your great aunt Susie thought you should do. And once you've reached that, you just feel really good inside, and you're excited to get up and put those feet on the ground in the morning. Well, you know, I always say you need to get up with a smile and you need to go to bed with a smile. And if you do those two things, everything that happens to you in between is just, you know, part of something else. But uh, I, I know that um, you are passionate about what you do, Jean. I mean, uh, not only do you have a purpose, but you have a passion for it as well. I know that. And I don't get up and go right to the computer because what I do is I get up first, I take care of my cats, then I take care of me, I eat my breakfast, and then I work out, and then I take my shower, and then I get to the computer. <laughs> but um, uh, it's, it's interesting because so many of us are living our lives on the computer now. So what would you say is the biggest thing that you think somebody should be looking for at this point in our world and in their lives to look for a job? Uh, the, the very first thing is, is to start doing, uh, working on the networking aspect of it to get yourself out there and to get the no like trust factor. Uh, that's paramount actually, because people hire people they like. You know, you could possibly not have all the qualifications, and this has happened to me. I didn't have all the qualifications for a particular job. And when I interviewed with the executive vice president, he liked me. And he said, you know, I can teach you the technical stuff. What I can't teach you is how to be a good manager and how to be a people person. And you're right, selling ourselves is something that a lot of people have a challenge with because they're not used to tooting their own horn. And look at your strengths and go with them. And well, I know that you, um, you have a, uh, a gift for our listeners which is the Confident Career Change Checklist. So I'm assuming that on there are a lot of uh, helpful hints for everybody. Yes, well, this is, uh, it's not a simple thing. It is simple, I will say. It's simple, but it's not easy, Gail. It's not something that you're going to go just check off. Okay, did this one, did that one. It's something that's going to have you really start thinking deeper about how you get the meaning and purpose in your life. And that's what I would like your viewers to do or listeners to do is to really dig deep inside themselves because it's simple and it's not easy because we're fearful of looking inside. Well, that's true. That's very true. So how can people reach you, Jean? I mean, where should they go uh, for the gift and where should they go to find out more about you and what you do and how you can help them? They can go to my website, which is Accelerated Synergies, A-C-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-E-D, Synergies, S-Y-N-E-R-G-I-E-S. So together we will accelerate the process for the career change. So please go to my website, acceleratedsynergies.com, and at the very top, you can click and you can get my gift to you, the Confident Career Change Checklist. Fantastic. And folks, uh, if you want to check me out, I'm at spunkyoldbroad.com. That's my website. My uh, courses are at sobuniversity.com. And if you're interested in joining my virtual uh, SOB club uh, on Facebook, just go to Facebook groups and look for uh, SOB Virtual Club. 
Um, Gina has been an absolute delight uh, talking with you today. And I know right now your services are probably needed more than ever because people are looking for, oh, where can I work now because my job is not coming back. And also maybe this is the time I need to go to work for myself and go into business. So there's a lot of things that you can help people with. And uh, um, you've got an online program, Burnout to Bliss. You've got one, the ABCs of Confident Career Change. All of that will help uh, our, our listeners. So I want to thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, gosh, I wish you only the best. And we'll be seeing each other soon online on a Zoom call, right? <laughs> Absolutely, Gail. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. No problem. Again, remember, Jean can be found at AcceleratedSynergies.com. Thanks so much. Hi. This is Dr. Gale, and I wanted you to know I have a whole bunch of other things to offer you. If you go to spunkyoldbroad.com, you will see an array of SOB stuff for sale and all our latest products and additions. If you're interested in getting on TV, I have a brand new course, Get on TV. And if you want to start your own business, you'll want my SOB Guide to Business Success. I know you'll love them all. I guarantee it. Thanks for listening to Women in Business. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you have any suggestions as to who you'd like me to have as a guest, just email me at gailcarson13 at gmail.com. Be sure to check out www.sob6tips.com. And in the meantime, go to www.spunkyoldbroad.com to see the resources I have for you.